I apologize, it seems like there was no sound. Welcome to the um, Alireza Firuja Magnus Carlsen uh, preview show. I think I've fixed the, uh, the technical glitch here. I apologize, this, you're going to be seeing a lot more of me, so hopefully uh, as the as time goes on, the, the technical details will be sorted. And so my producer just officially confirmed that I have sound. That was part of the idea, so hopefully we're good to go from now on. Uh, I apologize about that. So again, um, this is going to be a big game. Magnus Carlsen rated 28.72 against Ali Reza Firuja, uh, 27.23. Ali Reza will have the white pieces. Um, he's only 16 years old. Magnus at 29 feels like a veteran. He's been really at the top of the chess world for just about a decade. And in fact, you know, I, I pulled up some statistics, was looking at some charts, and the first time that Magnus crossed a 2800 rating barrier, um, Ali Reza was only six years old. So that's kind of a, probably knew how the pieces moved. I'm not sure if he had played in his first tournament yet. So that, you know, just shows the difference in a 13 year um, gap. Um, this is going to be their first classical game, but the two players did meet in a couple of, they met a couple of times before. Um, Probably the most notable one is when they played at the World Rapid and Blitz uh, tournament in the Blitz game. Um, when Ali Reza got a winning position, it was it was a complicated, it was a long and complicated game, and he got a, a winning position. And I'll actually be able to show you the video here just so you can see what happened. Um, and then he lost on time in a position where really it is inconceivable to lose, you know, with a couple of second increment. But he his King falls and he tries to pick it up, he, you know, does the kind of the courteous thing, I would say. Um, and then by the time he makes his move, uh, loses on time. And even though, you know, it really is almost, uh, you know, it's, you have to construct, you have to sort of help mate yourself as, as white to lose. Um, it does, uh, the rules state clearly that, you know, there, if there is a technical mating possibility, then it is, it is a win for the, for the, for the side that wins on time. So uh, let me play the video for you here so you can see it. All right, so as you can see, you know, Ali Reza was clearly a little bit confused and possibly upset, you know, because of what happened, and that's understandable. I'm not sure Magnus even necessarily knew for sure that he had won, um, but of course it's an unfortunate, unfortunate, you know, end to a game that was otherwise well played by uh, by by both players, but by Ali Reza at the end, he, he was winning in this, this end game. Um, so... They also met another time in a uh, banter blitz, actually on Chess 24, and I have that video for you as well. Uh, in a game where, where you know, Magnus uh, got the better of him while talking, and you know, I wouldn't say trash talking, but certainly he was, uh, you know, he was happy to be uh, a, a younger, very promising player, and uh, in any convincing manner. Of course, Ali Reza will be, will probably have watched this video of Magnus talking about him, and will want to avenge uh, avenge his couple of unfortunate. Um, uh, defeats so far in Blitz games. Of course, this is a classical game, so completely different time control. But I also have the video of uh, the game that was played on Chess 24, and so I will I will play that for you now.
All right, we are back. I did also want to mention that, by the way, the um, the game for the World and Rapid List Championship, we uh, thank FIDE for allowing us to use their video footage, as that was uh, that was uh, official footage from from the tournament, and definitely a a cool one to see live in action, the surprised uh, faces of of what happened. So, all right. So now, um, moving on to tomorrow's game, obviously a lot of expectations here. Uh, you have Magnus, who certainly, you know, doesn't want to give an easy game to someone that he may consider a potential challenger to his throne uh, down the road. Of course, it would not be this year because uh, Ali Reza is not part of this World Championship cycle yet. But certainly, certainly they're, they're going to meet many times and he may want to set the tone. On the other hand, Ali Reza has had a, a very good tournament, in particular with the white pieces. He's really, he's really kind of been clobbering people left and right. And so I think he's, you know, he's certainly feeling confident with the white pieces, a little bit more so than with the black pieces. And we're going we're gonna to go through some of the games that they've played now uh, so you can see. But I think, you know, this is an important game for both players. Ali Reza stands at the top of the standings right now with five and a half out of eight, tied with Fabiano Caruana, who's had a bit of a less... Uh, less um, Less uh, complicated path, I guess, because Ali Reza did lose one game and won four, so it's a, you know, it's it's a lot of wins actually for 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 playing in um, for playing only uh, uh, only eight games so far, and so um, and on the other hand, Magnus Carlsen has had um, a very different tournament. He actually has had very few winning chances, which is unusual for him because. You know, he's, he's the kind of player that tends to generate chances from almost nothing all the time. But uh, as he would say himself, I think his, his opening play has not been the best in this tournament. And, you know, potentially maybe he's, he's keeping a few things in his, in his arsenal for, for, for the World Championship that's coming up. It's, it's still a, a ways to go, but, you know, you do wonder, um, you do wonder if, he's, uh, if, he's, uh, if he's hiding a few things. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you know, he did just win a game. We're going to look at that game against Vitugov. That was a, a fairly convincing game, uh, and and he could easily get on a roll. But he was in trouble, and, you know, for him, it's, it's first of all, it's unusual to be in trouble, uh, especially when you consider that he has been on a massive tear, right? As everybody knows, he's he's has not lost the longest streak ever. I guess it's at, I don't know, I, I'm not very good with remembering numbers, but maybe it's at 113, 114 games now. Um, it's a lot of games. I, you know, I just played a banter blitz and I lost my second game. So that's, that's not that impressive. Um, and so obviously he's, he's on the back of a, of an incredible, uh, couple of years and, and, and a streak that we, you know, we may not see again in our lifetimes. Um, so I'm sure he doesn't want to lose. Um, and so, yeah, so let's look, let's look at some of the games that they've played. Um, you know, it all started, um, for Magnus, it started with the game with Anish Giri which kind of set the tone for the tournament for him, I would say, and it was not in the best of ways. So uh, the game started with c4, knight f6, knight c3, e5, e3. And so sort of a, you know, Magnus plays the English opening a lot, but this queen b3 move was unusual even for him. And it's, it's only been played a couple of times and not by the best of players. And maybe it shows that he's trying to stay clear of, of, uh, of the main theoretical lines. I don't, you know, expect him to play queen b3 in, in the world championship match. Uh, but this game, we're not going to go through the whole game, but basically um, Anish Giri played quite solidly. Uh, Magnus got the worst, sort of the worst of a, of a drawn position. He was never in trouble, but certainly certainly black was closer to having an edge than white. Um, and so this, you know, was in kind of stark contrast to the way Ali Reza started his, his tournament. Uh, let me find you this game. So Ali Reza started with the white pieces against uh, Kovalyov here and uh, you know this it, sometimes in any super tournament like this you need a little bit of good fortune and and if you get you know if you get a little bit lucky in your first game then that certainly helps uh, but Ali Reza with white seems to play e4 uh, very consistently and plays it pretty aggressively and seems to know his stuff uh, very well um, but in this game you know in a standard uh, Ray Lopez I'm just gonna I'm going through quickly because you know of course we have a lot of uh, a lot of material to potentially go through, um, but in a position that's known here um, on move uh, 16, uh, Kovalyov played c4, and of course, you know, with an engine, it's 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 extremely clear. But even without an engine, you know, I think um, Peter Zvidler, when he was looking at this game, and myself, I was I was actually in Hamburg when this game was played uh, with Peter and Jan, and you know, we were all sort of wondering 
wondering what was going on here because it it clearly um it clearly is a is a bad move and and so um Ali Reza here simply simply uh won a pawn and the game sort of followed so it was it was um sort of a fortuitous thing because it's it's quite rare in these events that that someone will uh will blunder so quickly in the opening and so after knight takes b5 this is really just a horrible position for black because not only is down a pawn but the c4 pawn is likely to fall and um but Ali Reza converted this you know quite uh quite comfortably and was off to a a solid start um so after that um well Magnus Magnus was in trouble in a few games I, I did want to show you a few positions that that I thought were were particularly interesting um for example, against uh, Jordan Van Forest here, um, Jordan has been playing the Italian game, uh, which is you know reasonably well. It's actually extremely popular now, but most people on knight f6 are, have been playing you know d3 and they play a slow a, a slow setup with c3 and a4, um, and that's sort of the new way to play, right? And it used to be people would play c3 and castles short and not wor not worry about gaining space on the queen side, but uh, this plan has been extremely popular, but the move uh, knight g5, which Jordan has been playing, and he's played it. He also played it against Anon and had another interesting game. Um, has been uh, looked at quite a bit recently, also in, in particular because of this variation um, with bishop d3. But generally, you know, at least from from what I know of, of the theory of this variation, um, it seems like White is often up upon these variations. But the the counterplay that Black has is is quite. Uh, is quite uh, quite good and, and generally enough to, to be considered equal. Um, however, you know it seems like Jordan is kind of out prepared his opponents, and um, I don't want to get too into the weeds here. Uh, it's it's quite possible that Bishop G4 on move 12 here was not the best move, uh, but um, basically in this position. Uh, Magnus finds himself in a little bit of trouble because of this very interesting and strong move g4. So counterintuitive, right? It's the kind of move that if you were, if you were, let's say, a 1200 rated player, not a 2650 rated player, and you played this, um, your master coach would probably look at you and, and, you know, say, you know, you don't move your pawns in front of your king like that. Of course, in 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 this case, it was actually a a strong move. And it's justified by tactical reasons, and I'm, I'm not totally sure if this was preparation or if he just found it. It's, it's, it's probably a fairly common idea, so he must have looked at, at at this, if not in this exact position, something similar. But basically, um, he got a very good position, and Magnus was in some real trouble. We'll go through some moves quickly here until we get to um, this position where um, so Jordan played b3. Magnus plays bishop a3, which is kind of the only move to keep some life in a position. And here he would have been in some real trouble if white had just played uh, d takes c4, sacrificing the exchange. Bishop takes c1, rook takes c1. And I'm sure Jordan considered that, but he just decided that he was better in the other position uh, and didn't want to, you know, sacrifice the exchange. But this would have been a really tough one to hold for Magnus because um, white has simply a majority on the on the. Uh, on the queen side that could lead to two should lead to two connected passers uh, it's going to be difficult to hold on to this d4 pawn and black really doesn't have much counterplay so this is you know and i think the computer evaluates this as something like plus one and a half or plus two so it's you know even by the computer by the, comp the computer's opinion is that it's it's quite quite difficult and so uh this would have been a real a real struggle for magnus and then I want to show another position that Magnus had in the game versus Anand, and that was another tough game. Um, let me just find it here. I actually want to show almost the very end. So um, I guess we can go back to you know about move 40. Um, this was a tough position for Magnus also. I mean he's 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 uh he's down a pawn. It's been it's been a complicated game, but I can actually show just one thing that did catch my eye here. Um, in the opening, I, so I will I will show the opening. I, I, sorry, I changed my mind here. But <laughs> in um, in sort of a standard position, this is this is something that you know Magnus and, and Anand have probably both had like dozens of games in. Um, the the normal move is to play d5 first. Here he played a6. So this already is a bit unusual. And again, it, it feels to me like maybe Magnus has been trying to to play some offbeat lines to uh, to kind of you know give his opponents. For the world championship maybe a little bit more to look at 
some of it could be a decoy. Some of it could just be, um, you know, that he feels he feels confident and he just likes playing different stuff. But but uh, you know, as he himself has said, he's he's kind of suffered in a lot of these games, uh, which is unusual for him. But the position didn't turn out. Um, I can't imagine that he was especially happy about the position that he got. And again, we're going to move quickly through this here, uh, so that this you know pre-show doesn't end up lasting uh, uh, two hours. But um, he's he's basically got the worst the worst of it throughout this game. And I just want to show where it gets into to the end game because I think it's it's just a sort of fascinating geometry. Um, but Anand could have tried to play on. So in in in, in this position here on move 49, Anand was up a pawn and sacrificed a pawn to have a, a strong C pawn, and certainly that's a sort of a, a a natural a natural way to do it, and White never risks losing after this. Um, on the other hand, it, it might be that there was more accurate, uh, a more, more, more accurate way to play. Um, but here, you know, Magnus defends well, and in this position, uh, Anand decides that there's not really going to be a way to win here. Uh, White you know, the, the problem that white has is that black can bring the king to f8 and e8 and d7. Uh, however, and this is not something that I found over the board, but the computer finds it instantly, there is a really tricky move that would have kept chances on the board here, and the move is rook b4. Now this is a, a, a really odd one, but the idea is that there's, there's this threat that's surprisingly difficult. So if black makes the most obvious move, which is king f8, then white has this pretty amazing knight d6. So this is a bizarre move, right? So the rook is attacked. Now, if pawn takes d6, rook b8, and white is probably winning this one. The 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 only move that black can really play. Well, they can try either king e7, rook c8, and then move the king. But it g leads to a similar kind of position. And I suspect that white can win can win this one by creating something on the king side eventually. But uh, but the main point is that on um, on knight d6, rook takes c7. There's this crazy check, rook b8, king g7, and the knight jumps onto e8 and wins, uh, wins the exchange. Now, you know, this would all be more amazing if the resulting position was not a draw. And this one actually loses, be oh, well, I think it probably loses because there's no good square. So, for example, king h7, knight takes, knight takes, rook b7, and black is going to lose a pawn. And so, you know, in this case, it's just losing. Um, so this, you know, is... Hard to find, uh, but but definitely I, I thought the geometry of rook b4 is kind of amazing. The 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 problem with it is that I think uh, unfortunately black can at some point do something like this, and probably this one is just going to be a draw. Uh, but you know, if I were a nun, I certainly would try. Of course, I'm sure you know the, this rook b4 idea was hard to find. But this is a game that as a whole, uh, Anon struggled through. Sorry, Magnus struck, struggled to. Uh, to hold. And finally, to, to kind of round up the Magnus games, is the game that he won against Vitugov. Um, and this was sort of a typical typical Magnus positional game in the Rai Lopez. He played, you know, again, not, not super theoretical. And, you know, without getting into the weeds of it, I, I, I do think the opening is not, obviously, you know, playing moves like Bishop D2, it's not necessarily a theoretical problem for Black. Um, but he did he did get a nice position eventually. I mean, apparently here, instead of rook b7, I think c5 was a much better move, trying to close the, the trying to, to push the pawn to c4 and, and block that bishop. Because the plan that Vichugov, um, he may have missed queen f3, which is a strong move. You know, the idea is that even though the bishop uh, looks like it's under attack here after queen f6, um, it helps white. Um, and there's, you know, the threat of queen takes g6 there. So... You know, I think Vitugov kind of turned a okay position into a very bad position quickly, and then he also probably wins the prize for the um, the quickest resignation in this position. I mean, of course, White is you know optically and tactically probably just winning. Uh, however, you know he's not losing any material yet, and so you would have thought that he could make some more moves. But he certainly gave Magnus, uh, I guess he gave Magnus the benefit of the doubt, and I have no. I have no reason to believe that Magnus would not win this position, but it is, you know, I, I know that when I uh, when I uh, talk about chess to people that don't play chess and they ask me, well, why did he resign here? This is one that I would really struggle to to explain. Uh, that being said, it's Magnus's first win, and so he is fresh and he just won a game. And you know, in Wei Kanze in the past, he's sort of lined them up. So uh, so 
So he's he's, uh, he's definitely in. He's definitely not to be taken lightly. Even though he struggled, and you know, I could go through the game against Jeffrey Siong and um, where he was also down upon at some point. And so he's he's had a a surprisingly tough go in in this tournament. But again, he's he's refusing to lose, and he's managed to to win uh, one. So he's not that far. If he beats uh, if he beats Ali Reza tomorrow, then he would be in a tie with him and probably a half point behind uh, Caruana. Um, uh, in the standings. So now let's look at some of the some of the games that Ali Reza plays uh, has played. And other than I already showed you the first game that was a Ray Lopez, um, his white games have been just really impressive. Uh, he had this game against Art, Artemyev. Art, I'm actually not sure. You know, I speak reasonable Russian, uh, but I'm not sure I know how to pronounce this name. If it's Artemyev or Artemyov, I'm not sure. But anyway, um, this was a Karakhan, and again he plays a sharp variation with h4, h5. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, which has been fairly popular, but, Art, um, you know, Artemyev is normally pretty well prepared, uh, but he gets in trouble quickly here. And I, I looked at this for a little while. Um, it's possible that queen takes b2 was a playable move. I mean, I'm, of course, uh, black would have considered it, um, but it, it does give, you know, white an easy way to, to develop. And, uh, and it seems like the, the, the black king struggles a little bit, so we can play positions like this. Um, which would have been interesting, but white is going to castle next, and black is still a few moves away from castling. At some point, there's going to be rook b1, rook b7. But surely this was something to be considered, um, because the way he played um, here, he just lands in trouble quite quickly. Um, this move castles kingside. I don't know if this was preparation, but it's one of those moves that looks so unnatural because it hangs a lot of stuff, right? Like none of them, none of them are actually hard to calculate, but it just looks. It's a hard move to find if you haven't seen it before. You know, the first first thing that hangs is is uh is this one. Now this one just doesn't work because of knight a4. So this is a simple the knight hangs here. Um, but this shows a level either of preparation or, or of calculation of of Ali Reza. Um, so yeah, so after um, after castles, there's another. There's of course the d4 pawn is hanging also. Um, so yeah, queen takes d queen takes d4 was actually a fun one. I, I did I did have that one marked because I thought it was fun. But there's a there's a really nice move here for white knight b5, and um, one of the problems, of course, if queen takes d1, it's nice it's a nice one. I always like uh, to put mate on the board, so this is mate. Um, but there are you know complicated variations here, but this is actually fairly simple. Uh, black just is so far behind in development that this position is just lost. Um, and that's conceivable. So, um, so again, after after this simple, you know, an apparent simple castling move, uh, Black just gets in a whole lot of trouble here. Now it's it's just a positional game, and uh, the rest he was, you know, he was extremely convincing. Um, he was extremely convincing, and Black never kind of got out of trouble. Um, so moving on to um, moving on to another of his white games. Um, the game here against uh, Jeffrey Siong. Um, this was again an example of, of him just uh, just outplaying his opponent from a from a fairly fairly balanced position, but he just manages to keep pieces on the board. And so it, you know this is a balanced position. I don't think anything uh, particularly special that White has in the opening. So it's, it doesn't seem like his openings are 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 crushing, but he's found good ways to to get playable positions, and that's. That's kind of the most that White can hope for, um, and so he got here a very complicated position that at some point was probably just equal, uh, but he managed to 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 outplay Jeffrey in this game. Um, I did want to show a few of his black games because there was one there was one in particular that caught my attention. Uh, and this is the game against Yu Yang Yi, and it's an interesting game because um, I think it shows that Ali Reza is is so strong that he gets away with not really knowing what he's doing in certain openings yet. And I, I don't mean to sound, you know, less than humble, uh, but this this variation is a variation that a lot of my uh, U.S. Um, player, the, the U.S. chess players may have seen this in the games of, of Grandmaster Sergei Kudrin, who's sort of a main, mainstay of, of U.S. Open tournaments. And this is a fairly quiet variation, but it does have some venom. And the main danger for black is that you can end up in a position that looks like the knight d5, like the Zvezhnikov variations that everyone has been playing. There were a lot of, you know, Caruana Carlson games in this line. Um, it kind of turns into the similar structure, 
but it can be a really bad version for Black. And this is what happens in this game. And I'm sure that uh, Ali Reza will rev revise his repertoire. But so without getting into too many details here, I do just want to show that. So here, for example, after move 21, this is already a really bad position. And, you know, if you again, if you play in U.S. Opens, you've probably seen uh, Sergey Kudrin win like, you know, 14 games like this in the last two years in, in a U.S. Open. Um, but it's it's sort of known to be bad. But somehow Ali Reza just manages to hold. And there, there were several ways for White to kind of push and, and be much better. But he managed to, you know, kind of stay calm, outcalculate his opponent. And he actually drew without any real trouble. So it was, you know, for me, it was just a telling game of a, of a player who's very confident and is, is using his ability to, to calculate. And he's still young, and it shows that, you know, with a little bit more... Uh, sort of polished to his openings. He's been playing to Nydorf with Black. That's a tough one. Um, he also had, you know, I guess, to, to, to conclude his games with Black, the game against, he did lose one game against Wesley So, um, which was, you know, a, a, a tough a tough game where he was he was just um, kind of outplayed from a somewhat innocuous variation, but but not easy for Black to play. Um, this came from a Queen's Gambit Accepted. Um, so he's been playing the Queen's Gambit Accepted and the Nidor fairly consistently with black. Um, of course, tomorrow he's white, so I'm sure Magnus would have liked to, to have the white pieces and get a position like this. Uh, but in this case, the, the the main thing that he did wrong is this move e5, which I know uh, Peter Zvidler, our, our great commentator on Chess24, was uh, was quick to criticize, and rightly so. I mean, and I think, you know, as... as, uh, as uh, Someone with some experience in the Queen's Gambit accepted, you know, if, if, if you're forced to make that move, things have gone really quite wrong. And after this, you know, Wesley just kind of outplayed him positionally. Um, I, I wasn't actually in love with the black position here. It's not so clear how to untangle yourself. Um, because, you know, if you play rook d8, then the white moves, um, moves the queen away to either b1 or a1. Then, you know, plays rook c1. There's some ideas with knight g5. It's just, it's just an unpleasant, unpleasant position. Uh, to play at some point, black may have to try to go knight a7, but then that puts a piece on a bad square, you know, in order to trade some pieces. Um, so, you know, but this was a this was a this was a tough game and his only loss, but he's already won four games, uh, so it's it's a it's impressive. Um, so, what are we going to see tomorrow? Well, that's a it's a tough question. I'm I'm I've been very curious um, how Magnus will play against e4. Um, you know, there's a chance that he goes for the Sicilian if he's looking to get a complicated game. There's also a, a chance that he goes for e4, e5, and just decides to uh, to play in the Ray Lopez and 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 see if he can find a find a way to outplay his opponent in a more uh, quiet position. Um, and you know, it's also it's also interesting to see how much Ali Reza is looking to press in this game versus kind of be content with playing a quiet game and see if he gets chances if Magnus tries too hard. Uh, but either way, it's 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 amazing to see this this budding rivalry uh, get on its way. You know, we had the um, we've had some quick games that they've played in the past, but this is the first classical one, the first of many. It would be great to see them play a long match down the road. But um, anyway, I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it at that for today. Uh, by the way, you are going to be seeing a lot more of me. We have a lot of, a lot uh, planned for for in particular uh, the U.S. audience. Uh, you know, we're gonna be uh, doing all kinds of, of after shows, things during more sort of the U.S. Uh, primetime hours that were less covered by by the, the great people in, in Germany and and, uh, and Spain. And so, you know, we're going to try to, to, to target the U.S. market. And, uh, and yeah, I'm looking forward to being, uh, to being a big part of that. Uh, in the meantime, I will leave you with a... Um, with a promotion for a free a free video that you know you sh and and chessable so chessable is is a part of the uh, part of the uh, umbrella of entities that chess 24 is part of and they have proprietary um, software you know something called the move trainer it's been proven to to help people uh, improve very quickly and so I'm just gonna just going to play um, show you the information about this. And I will see you again tomorrow. I think we're going to do an after show after all the games tomorrow, sort of a quick recap of what happened, uh, what happened then. So until then, see you all later.